Uh, your second favorite team will be in Inglewood next year. Who? He said who. <laughs> they should just, you know, as they go down to Inglewood, keep going. <laughs> hit, hit that four five. Take it back to San Diego. Keep going take south. The Chargers with you. <laughs> Chargers yeah. with you. What up, ATS fam? Concert season and festival season are fastly approaching. Whether I'm hitting up the desert for Coachella or seeing Ice Cube at the Forum for 420, I'm ready to get my tickets with Game Time with just two clicks. I've been using Game Time for a while now. They're customer centric and find the best prices for tickets. And I don't have to worry or stress when I'm planning a good time. When I pick the tickets, I can actually see the real seat. It's a panoramic photo, not digitally created. So when I pick my seats, I can see a band on the stage or people in the crowd. I can really envision how my experience is going to be. They have the most flexible customer service, too. Part of their game time guarantee is event cancellation protection, 24-hour returns guaranteed, and job insurance. They understand that life and the unexpected happens. So if you get your tickets and find yourself without a job, don't worry. They've got your back. And they have the best prices on last-minute deals. I've seen them up to 60% off. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app and use code SMOKE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code SMOKE. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Man, we back. Unplugged our weekly look around to see what's happening. Jack, what's going on out there in Atlanta, baby? Man, cool and nice weather. Ready to get out to the West Coast this weekend. How you doing? You, uh... I wasn't well, gonna say this. I ain't gonna ask you how you doing. I'm just glad that you found a possum after you moved out. Let me say that. Crazy, bro. I was moving out the new, out the old crib, and a possum snuck in, and that motherfucker was ready for war. Had me on the counter with golf clubs, <laughs> cussing it out. You know they can it. climb, right? They can climb and jump, and that motherfucker was hissing, had big claws. It was, it was all bad. But luckily, we both lived to see another day. Well, Jack, we want to welcome definitely a friend to the program and, and our brother, but someone you're really close to. So I'm, I'm gonna let you do the honors. One and only. Legend, uh, pioneer in many ways, uh, somebody who I consider a, a, a big brother who definitely then uh, put me in a position with something uh, great, the big three, one of the, uh, the the biggest leagues in the world. So welcome to our show again, a, f- a friend and family member of the show, the Honorable Ice Cube. Yeah, yay. Whoa, whoa. What's happening, man? How y'all feeling? Yeah, yeah. yay. You made, uh, you made headlines last week. Uh, some information that leaked. And you wanted to get ahead of it. Uh, you announced that you guys had worked out a, a possibility to offer Caitlin Clark a big deal with the big three. Can you give us the details on that and uh, how'd that come about? We made our offer a couple of weeks ago, and um, and you know we was hoping to hear something back, and we haven't heard nothing back yet. Um, well, we heard something back. We heard. You know, it's tournament time, Um, but it leaked. And so Mm -hmm. we don't want to deny it. The best thing to do is just, you know, let people know what was going on. And um, it's just something we we believe, you know, it's a great opportunity. Um, And, you know, we believe that, you know, being a guard, she can uh, play in the big three. You know, we've... Mm -hmm. We've looked at our guards over the years and the size of our guards and um, and said, you know, that's a position that if, if, you know, if a female was to play in the big three, that would be a position that they would probably uh, do best at. You know, um, it's too rough in the paint, <laughs> you know. You know, I know some bigger girls out there, but, uh, you know, just you – know, Trying to deal with Reggie Evans in the pain would be just, <laughs> just not, brutal. Not, 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 no, nothing nice. So, uh, you know, we just felt like we have a great opportunity and we wanted to extend uh, the opportunity. And we believe, you know, of course, if she joined our league, it would it would lift the league to new heights. I agree. I agree. Me, me, as me being one of the pioneers of the league, been involved in the league since year one. Uh, I, I, I loved it when I heard about it. I think uh, I know what she'll do for the league. I know she loves to play the game of basketball and as and is a competitor. And when you get a chance to 
to make some money like that, you know, in in a short period of time playing basketball, doing something you love, I think it's a smart decision because as, as you play the game, you also want to make things beneficial for yourself. And uh, this is a great, this is a this is a win win for both parties. And like I said. Uh, I would love to welcome her to the league because if she came on my team, I'll make sure I protect her because I know where her future is going. But just to have her a part of the big three would be something that uh, that that would be unbelievable and something that I would be I would love to be a part of. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's, it's like I said, a great opportunity. The league is slightly different than when when you play. You know, the first two or three years were. It was jail hardcore, ball. You know, it's hardcore. <laughs> and, uh, and so we've, uh, you know, still rough in that paint, you know, but we, you know, we don't want to hack in the league. So we, right. you know, we've made sure that the game flows, but but it's also, you know, hand checking. It's also, you know, hard nosed defense being played too. I think people want to see uh, the players compete. You know, when it when it feels like players are not even competing anymore, that's when, you know, I wouldn't even go watch my kids playing a rec league game if they didn't compete. Um, so it's really about that. And we make sure we keep the competition fierce. Um, but no nobody wants prison balls, so we you know, we yeah. we made sure that uh Players flow and they go, but if you go in that paint, you know, be beware. I got a couple questions, Q. One, um, the financial side of it, um, the top, the max salary in the WNBA right now is two hundred fifty thousand. They're saying if she's a top four pick, I think she'll make anywhere just on the salary side from seventy five thousand to, to to upwards of a hundred thousand. Uh, was five million? Is, is that Urban Judgment, or was that actually the offer? And was it for one year? Like, how did how did the the, the financial side of this this offer come apart, uh, come together, and, and break down? Well, you know, we don't really want to go all the way into the deal and everything we've offered. Um, you know, if if she agrees, it all be it all come out. Um, it's with us. It's kind of like a nil situation. You know, our sponsors are clamoring. They would love for her to join the league. Mm -hmm. And if she joined the league, you know, uh, they would uh, support the league even more. So, it, you know, it's a thing where we believe the money is there if she decides to join the league with no problem uh, because, you know, they're sitting there waiting for her. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, it's just a great – opportunity like i keep saying you know as the ceo of the big three you know i wouldn't be doing my job if i didn't look at this and try to make it happen because everybody's gonna benefit the whole league mm -hmm. um you know we're we're an inch away from profit and once we get in profit then you know people will uh, uh, really really look at this league in a whole different light because guys will be making a lot more money so you know, this is our this is our approach and, and our push towards that. I want to ask you because one, you played in it, now you coach, and then Cube, this is your league. Do you guys really feel like? I mean, obviously, I feel like the game is headed this way. The the, the girls' game, I feel like the women's game overall, whether it be college or WNBA, is, is as big as it's been, as big as it's ever been. And there, there's always that talk: can women play with men? Um, obviously, I feel not from a skill standpoint because I feel like a lot of these women are just as skilled as men. I think what set men apart is the athleticism and the strength. So my question to both you guys is: Do you feel like she can compete on a strength level with men, regardless of their finish in the NBA or played overseas or whatever it may be? Because I feel like that's where the difference between men and women are. It's not the skill set. The women are just as skilled. I feel like the strength and athleticism is what sets men apart. So do you feel like a Caitlin Clark can come in there? Because, you know, boys, and like you said, you cleaned it up. But boys in the big three are hungry, mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. hungry, trying mm -hmm. to eat. You know what I mean? So do you feel like from a competitive standpoint that Caitlin Clark can compete in the big three? I just feel like for the most part, I think she'll be all right. I mean, it's just it's just there's going to be a lot of situational basketball and who she's paired with. Especially in the big three, I, I don't care if it's if it's a female or a male. The the play the four or five players you 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 put together in the big three matters, right? Because you, you got to have a little bit of everything to be successful. I think what she brings to the game will be a, a a key asset to any team in the big three because she can shoot, and the spacing you have so much spacing going for rebounds. People get lost and wide up so many wide open shots are given in the big three. 
that's that's right up her alley. And pick and roll game. I think you know she's uh, if you part her with two good guys like teams I put together, uh, and I, it's, uh, other teams like if you partner her with like with a, with a Lisa Leslie type team, they have pieces that can make up for her not being as strong as another guy. But her her basketball IQ, she can she she might probably won't be Joe Johnson in the big three mat, but she definitely she'll definitely compete and and and, and do some damage out there, and you'll definitely notice her. So, Cube, your thoughts? So, I mean, my opinion is, you know, who am I to say? It's not up to me. You know, I'm not, I'm not a basketball player um, at that level. And, you know, I'm just glad I could provide the opportunity so we can see. Um, but when I look over the years and over, you know, basketball courts all across the world, men and women are playing together. Maybe not at the pro level, but they're playing together in uh, different walks of life. So um, I believe, you know, she could play with the men, but like I said, who am I to say, you know, we have the opportunity, you know, I feel blessed to have this opportunity uh, and let's see. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you know, keep our fingers crossed for that opportunity. I'm sure once the tournament uh, ends, you'll get a little bit more information. Um, you don't have to give us names, but was she the only female player that came to mind? Were there other ones out there? Or was she just kind of the first one you want to start with and, and see where that goes? Now, we've thought of a lot of different ones over the years. Um, you know, this is kind of, to me, the perfect opportunity. Um, I believe her name was Maya mm -hmm. Moore. We, we was... Mm -hmm. Uh, thinking about when we was trying to get her to come out of retirement a few years back. And so, you know, this isn't our first time taking a look, but this is a, the first player we thought that could come in and mm -hmm. elevate the league and take the league mm -hmm. to another level when it comes to the attention of the basketball audience. So, um, you know, that's why it's a unique situation. Uh, and that's why it was a, you know, an offer that we, we knew would get her attention. I don't know how far away we are from it, but I feel like it's coming at some point. Women, there, there's going to be a crossover at some point on the professional level. And, you know, obviously for years they've talked about the disparity in pay and, and WNBA players, and they have to go get second jobs sometimes overseas. And we saw what happened with Brittany Griner and all that shit. So this is an opportunity, fi a financial opportunity to obviously, you know, kind of solidify yourself and, and, and jump. So Cube, in your opinion, obviously, because the, the two leagues kind of coincide, your league and the WNBA, I think the WNBA starts a little bit before you guys, but you guys kind of run simultaneously. So ideally in your mind, how would you see that work? And let's go hypothetically. She says, yes. So the WNBA starts a month before yours. You guys start a little bit later. How do you feel like that would work out with she, in your opinion? Cause I, I'm sure, I'm not sure if you guys have clauses. I know in the NBA, you can't play obviously other sports. So obviously it would have to be like a deal between you guys and the WNBA of being able to play both. Or how did you kind of see that side of the business of it working out? If you look at our schedule and look at the WNBA schedule, you know, if she went to Indiana, there's only one game that overlaps. You know, we only play once a week. So, um, of course, we would move our big three game so she'd be able to play in both. So, um, we think we can work around the WNBA schedule and uh, she'll be um, just fine. Dope. Uh, before we get off of this subject, uh, your partnership with X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, can you explain that and what, what fans should expect of this upcoming season? You know, broadcasting games in a new, fun, exciting way, you know, a little, a little different. We could be a little more colorful on X than we can on CBS. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, you know, our games are played on CBS, but it's usually two or three games. And then we usually have two or three games left. Uh, and those games will be on X. And um, okay. it's, it's, it's a great partnership, and we're going to redefine how sports is broadcast and have a lot of fun with it and uh, be able to be very creative. And um, so it's, it's a new day in sports. Dope. Any communication with uh, Elon Musk about it, or is it both your guys' teams kind of figuring it out? I never met him, so it's, it's the teams figuring it out. And, uh, gotcha. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get there, uh, <laughs> no matter what, you know, I'm on it. Sure. I'm on it. <laughs> uh, transitioning into music right now, Kendrick and Drake, a little bit of back and forth. Kendrick took a shot, uh, at Drake 
on like that uh future and uh, on uh, future and uh, metro's album uh cube legendary has been nearly 30 years since the no vaseline um disc came have you heard kendrick's voice is two part have you heard kendrick's verse and is a little bit of competitive with all the bullshit that's going on in the streets if we keep it on wax your thoughts on just kind of the back and forth on just kind of raising the level of uh of music right now i mean you know battle is always fun uh could y'all lead a big three out of it though you know what i'm saying you know, big three is to everything i don't want to take, huh? no <laughs> take no strays you know what i mean but uh but it, you know it's cool to see you know everybody got to watch they watch they dome because you know drake ain't no punk when it comes to right to, to you know putting great music together and putting a disc record together Kendrick ain't no punk when it comes to the lyrics and putting a great record together. So, you know, it's going to be fun as a fan to watch. But, uh, you know, if y'all really want to see something dope, check out that Man Down album yeah, that's coming yeah. out from your homeboy Ice Cube. You know what I mean? Look for that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. That's what you look for. When can, when, when, when can they expect that? Oh, we're going we gonna to drop it this June. You'll start, you'll okay. start hearing songs. You know, y'all get it first. Yes, sir. You know I need it. For sure. Without a doubt. Question. I mean, obviously one of the most legendary diss tracks in the history of the game. What goes into and what's your mindset like when you're going and, and writing one of these uh, th- these battle raps? Uh, go for the juggler. Go <laughs> for the juggler, you know, and, and don't cross the line. You know, but just go for the juggler, but don't cross the mm-hmm. line. Mm. You know, with, I mean, with no Vaseline, they was pretty, uh, you know, the reason I came that hard because they was, they was right. coming at me, you know they what I mean, with a lot, foul, yeah. a lot of foul uh, yeah. language, yeah. what they was going to do to me and all this kind of stuff. So I, you know what I mean? I had to, I had to let them have it. But Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. I, I, I think you can't hold back. It's like a fight. It's like a fight. Right. You know, you ain't going to pull no punches in a fight. You got to throw them. Yeah, facts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, talking about basketball, the transition to L.A. sports, you think the Lakers got a shot in hell to make a deep run? He said a shot. No. <laughs> they always got a shot. Denver. You know, they always got a shot. You know, you got LeBron and AD and D'Angelo. He dope. Um, but it's really, you know, I wish they would have got a big man. I wish they would have got somebody to deal with the Joker. I don't think it's – I don't think AD is comfortable – playing, you know, a guy that big, a center. Uh, I may be wrong, but it seemed like when we we won the championship, there was a lot of help, you know, from, Two from, big from bullies Dwight. Down. Dwight yeah. and McGee. McGee. McGee, yeah, you know, so yep. so I just think we need those seven footers to help, to help, you know, help carry the load down low. He played 70 games this mm-hmm. season. He yeah. yeah, shout out for real. 70 games and at 25 and 13. I mean, that's kind of been the knock is, you know, is he going to play? Is he going to show up? And I think AD is. Oh, no, AD is great. You know, I'm not complaining mm-hmm. about AD. I just think he's more comfortable at power right. forward. Like Tim Duncan power was. He can, he can, he, yep. Yeah, he can flow and mm-hmm. go and do his thing and not have to bang and um, not have to worry about rebounds as much, even though he could snatch 20 of them if he want to. Um, mm-hmm. I just think, it, you know, when it's a seven game series, you know, you guys know everything changes because right. now now people can dial in and lock in on you. And um, it's a different game in the playoffs. So I just think we should have got a big. Right now, transitioning with the L.A. legend himself, Cube, let's talk a little bit of L.A. slash Vegas sports. Uh, your second favorite team will be in Inglewood next year. Um Trying to capture some fans. Uh, oh. Thoughts on the Clippers move to Ingle? <laughs> he oh. said, "Who?" <laughs> thoughts on the Clippers move to Inglewood? Uh, you know, kind of, kind of uh, on a business standpoint. Obviously, gentrifying the area, bringing more business to the area. But uh, you know, the Clippers are now finally got their own place. I personally thought they should have changed their name. But just thoughts on them kind of getting up out of Staples Center, getting their own spot in Inglewood. The Clipper Darrells, man, they get. They should just, you know, as they go down to Inglewood, keep going, hit, <laughs> hit that four five, take it back to San Diego, and take the keep Chargers going with south. you. Chargers with you. 
Take them both back to Diego, huh? Y'all messing Inglewood up, man. Inglewood used to be a nice place. <laughs> Inglewood used to be a nice, <laughs> nice place. place. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn oh, gentrification. Oh, boy. Uh, fucking Inglewood up take, down there. Take the motherfucking charges with you. It used to be a nice place. <laughs> Juju Watkins. Um, Trent- Oof, cold. Yeah. You know, what, uh, be- what you think about her? Oh man, she she got game. One of the coders, you know, she my my kids' favorite. You know, they love her. Mm-hmm. They love her. Yeah. Best female athlete since who? Oh mm-hmm. man, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Can't say that, man. You know, we got Lisa Leslie in the building, baby. You know <laughs> right, what I mean? right, so, right, right. She she uh, went everything. So yeah, you know, yeah, they got yeah, they right. got a lot of work to do. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I t- I put it on Lisa Leslie. So they can uh, yeah. take her down. Yeah. Get, she get is a winner. Her. I think yeah. Lisa is a winner. Juju at, Everywhere. Is a, at, at, at a day and age where kids are, we're playing 17-year-old sophomores and, and 17-year-old freshmen. She's a true 18-year-old freshman, broke all Cheryl Miller's scoring records. Uh, and the one thing about the, 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 the women's side of the game is she has to play, I think, until she's 22. Uh, so I think she has to play all four years. So I think she might be the one girl that, you know, down the line could could change rules, maybe leave at possibly after her junior years because she's set to be, with all due respect to Caitlin Clark, Juju can be the one that breaks all those records. Because yeah. I got a chance to see her in person about a month and a half ago, Cube, and she was cold, yeah, bro. Yeah. Cold package, mid-range. She could play in the a big three, too. Three, yeah. plays defense. Yes. To me, she's a stronger, mm-hmm. more, you know, st- sturdier uh, a frame than, than, than a Caitlin Clark. But big fan of Juju and definitely what she's doing. Uh, down the street at SC for sure. Without a doubt, you know, uh, it's going to be fun to watch her in the next three years. Um, I think the NBA should start taking guys, you know, after their senior year in college. You know, it's like you don't always have to be one and done to be the greatest. You know what I'm saying? You can grab some seniors sometimes that's that's mature and ready to play at this level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you bring up a great point because the league, when Jack and I came in the league, there was vets, 38, 39, 40, whether they played or not, they were instrumental to the team, whether it be bridging the, bridging the gap, you know, taking young fellas under their wing. Now the game is so young and everything is based off potential. And that's why you see a lot of these young kids wipe out. And then for example, Jaime Hawkins, who went to UCLA, played four years, Spolster loves him. The fact that for everything you just said, Cube, he came in ready to play. He didn't have to go through no learning curve. He was ready to hit the ground running because he had four years under his belt and had that experience. I don't know if it should be a four, but I definitely feel like it should be something because I feel like we're losing too many young kids in the mix because they get to the league and it's just a, a cold wake-up yeah. call. They're not ready. They're not ready. And then, you know, they're, 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 they're done. The GMs, <laughs> the GMs and the owners got to – they got to uh, reward reward – you know, players that's, that's experience. You know, experience. You know, they wasn't one and done. So what? They 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 three and done or four and done, but right. they ready. Yep, yep. Uh, your Raiders. Yeah. In Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, I think they lost. Looking for a quarterback again. I'm not sure if they got one, but uh, any hopes for them this year? Yeah. You know, great new coach. You know, bringing in his his uh his staff. Um. You know, making making uh big strides on the defensive side of the ball. Shout you know, out, Mad Max. Yeah, Mad Max. Uh, you know, they just brought a boy over from uh from uh, Miami. That's that's a beast. Um, and yo, they got they they that's what they should be doing because they got to stop uh, Patrick Mahomes and the and the Chiefs. And so you know, they they making the right moves. You know, uh, I I liked our young quarterback last year. Anyway, you know, I think they should give him a chance to uh, fight for the job. I don't know if they kept him or not, but I liked him. But I want to shout out Antonio Pierce. Uh, I think, you know, he could start this movement. Also, shout out my brother, my brother uh, Deshaun Foster over at UCLA, where they're starting to empower former players instead of dudes that, you know, just strictly coaches these guys and and to me i feel like with this newer generation it's i mean x and o's will always be important but i think it's about relating to the players and you could tell antonio pierce has that locker room he Mm -hmm. has that respect and he has that love and that's what's going to make those guys play harder for him so i definitely want to shout him out and 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 his new opportunity uh being the, the officially the head coach of the las vegas raiders yeah i mean that's what we do in the big three all of our coaches our former players um to me, you know, it's, it's 
It's nothing more than 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 um somebody who's played the game, uh, relating to other players and showing them how to win. For me, it's just the perfect uh match. So I'm happy they got AP. You know, hopefully they'll continue to to elevate players into those culture yeah. positions. Empowering them, giving them real opportunities. <clears throat> Uh, transitioning, uh, the Bob Marley biopic, One Love, holding strong globally, 175 million in the box office. Obviously, what you did with Straight Outta Compton, I think, started a, a a real move. Obviously, there was things before, but I think you captured that that era uh, like people hadn't been able to do now, and you're starting to see, to me, better biopics and better time pieces. So, have you got a chance to see Bob's, and do you plan on it? I haven't had a chance to see it. I do plan on it. Uh, I respect anybody putting together a biopic. It's not easy. Um, you got to find the right actors. Um, you really have to to dig into that material and reveal things that the public don't know. You know, uh, it seemed easy to do a biopic. Just, just put put the scenes together that all the people Based know. Based on what everybody knows. But, but people don't want that. People want to, you know, get behind the things that they know and, and, and kind of, you know, understand those conversations and really – you know, maybe get a new uh, enlightenment on what the group was going through or coming from. So it's it's just not an easy thing. You know, Straight Outta Compton was, without a doubt, the hardest movie I ever made. Mm. I seen uh, I seen I seen um, uh, One Love Matt, and, and that shit was unbelievable. Whoever did, whoever shot okay. it, was it was a great movie. I even watched it again um, a couple a couple of days after. Man, they 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 really touched on. Um, how passionate Bob Bob Marley was about his people, you know what I mean? I I, I think that's not only did they, did they touch his music, but they touched how much he cared about people and the person he was. And I think that's why they did a great job. I love that. We definitely got to because you know my fiance's dad, Danny Sims, was the first yeah. manager that brought Bob Marley to the United States. So we definitely got to oh, catch up on that and 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 see that movie. Um, as, as far as movies goes, could you, have you got anything cooking or coming down the line that we could be expecting? You know, we're always working it out, you know what I mean, making it happen. You know, we can't tell y'all nothing about it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really like to brag about what we got coming because I just want to make sure it all come together and people, you know, okay. be hitting you like, man, what happened to this and what happened to that? So, But you got, but you got shit cooking, though. Of course. Keep your boy in mind. You know I'm ready. No problem. To hear no it. problem. Uh, Final Four weekend uh, coming up, men's and women's. Uh, this is a big – Jack, I don't know how you feel, but and I really haven't gone out of my way to jump on the bandwagon, but I just feel like I'm more excited. We talked about this off air. I'm more excited to watch – you know, it's Elite Eight right now, you know, starting today, but I'm more excited to watch this women's side of the bracket, to be honest with you, than I am about the men's. You know, you got Juju Watkins. I think she's going against Paige Becker. And then the rematch with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Yep. Um, thoughts, both you guys, on just what the women's game, where the women's game is at right now, and 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 these star-driven teams and and their chances. Well, where it's changed that Matt, it's like me and the fellas are getting together for the women's games now. It used to be the college yeah. games, college teams, but we more fans and we know more about the women's game. And even uh, last Monday when we did Unplugged, I talked about it. We had all four. We had uh, South Carolina, uh, Caitlin Clark, Juju, and Paige all playing right at each other. I was excited last Monday to see all those games. So. <laughs> Uh, I love I love what the game is doing. I even you know my team is South Carolina, so I talk to Raven uh, every game. Don Staley is my favorite female basketball player of all time, so I'm really I'm I'm excited about the way the game's going, Matt. I, I'm excited about the games today, and it just shows that the talent of the girls and and they're taking the game more serious. They get more passionate and they're showing in the game, and you know look some of the stuff they're doing, the the moves they're making them even more exciting than some of the guys' games. So I love where it's at right now, and I'm ready to be tuned in this evening as well. Appreciate you, Q. We know you got to run, baby. So thank you for your time. Uh, best of luck with the, with the, with the big vision you have of uh, of bringing these two worlds together. And man, we'll we'll be right there supporting you. Salute. Much love. Much respect, man. Thank you. For sure. Appreciate bye. you, my boy. Later. Jack, I don't know if you got a chance to see. Obviously, there was a big article in the Washington Post um, about Coach Mulkey, uh, the head coach of LSU, and then uh, Ben Blotch, I think his name is from the LA Times, wrote a slandered one-sided smear campaign yesterday uh, in the LA Times. What are your thoughts on, you know, obviously them, the, the, the timing of the piece, the fact that they're, you know, in the Elite Eight now and, and they're trying to distract her as a coach and, and the team as a unit. Um, 
what do you think about this? Because you talk to, you know, Haley Van Leith, I think her name uh, is, the, 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 the girl from LSU, and she thinks it's negative comments are fueled from racism. You know, I, I definitely think there's a little bit of a, a racial undertone. There's a lot of, you know, black women that, that, that are empowered and, and talking their shit from LSU, which I think is fine because men do it all the time. But for some reason, when women do it, it's an issue. Uh, but just thoughts on that whole LSU situation. I mean, they knocked out UCLA. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm a, I'm a former Bruin. But when I saw the article the next day in the LA Times, I'm just like, you know, I'm a big fan of what Coach Corey's been able to do with these UCLA ladies and what they represent. But this is this is some bullshit. Um, thoughts on just, you know, the, the approach and the way they're kind of attacking this LSU team. Well, for the most part, um, I, 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 we, we, we've been great ever since we stepped in this space on speaking on what we know, right? And, and and I don't know too much about what's true or not, but what I do know is we've been on the side of people just jumping out there saying stuff about us about us, and hating on us yep. before we even yep. started our show. Now they're eating their words. So so I understand how people try to shoot you down when, you, when you're on your way up before you even get to, 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 to reaching your goal, right? And I think for the most part, these same people that's that's trying to put this dirt on her now were same people that tried to put dirt on her when she was at Baylor. You know what I'm saying? But she wasn't on this level to where she has outspoken uh, female back players. players. Yeah, she 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 wasn't on the level where she her, 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 her first or second year there she won the she won the championship. So uh, she's on a different level right now. But I definitely uh, agree with Haley. A lot of times when people speak on people like that and try to ruin them, it's built up hate and racism because. Whatever she has going on in her life, it has no effect in yours, right? And 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 and, 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 and the time of you coming up with it, it shows that she's living rent free in your head, and you're just trying to mm. kick you're, you're trying to kick somebody at the top or get attention on somebody. You know what I'm saying? Why they at the top? So I think it's all bullshit, Matt, because we have been in that situation before. I just never really understood you know I'm, I'm gonna take Andrew Reese for example uh what she's been able to accomplish uh what she's able to do on and off the court first and foremost because I think people want oh you're an athlete you don't man fuck that do what you want to do as long as you keep the first thing first and I think her and her teammates have been able to do that but then you hear the UCLA player you know you, you hear people talk about the shit talking she does what's the problem with that men have been doing that the whole time and all of a sudden now when women are doing it it's an issue would it be uh, would it be as big as of an issue if it was a white girl talking that shit I don't think so, Jack. So my right. whole thing is just like, why is it such an issue when women talk shit? I mean, Caitlin Clark talks shit, and she's America's sweetheart. I think that's great. And you, you, and you hear UCLA players, some of them were quoted talking about how cool Angel Reese is off the court. Mm -hmm. You know, some motherfuckers are just dogs and assholes off the court, uh, on the court. And I don't mean no disrespect, because we were both the same. We were dogs and assholes on the court, but cool as a fan off, uh, you know, when we're, uh, excuse me, on the court, but off the court, we're cool as a fan. So. I just don't like this slander of just make trying to make trying to make someone, you know, the bad guy. Yeah, she does antics and yeah, she talks her shit, but her numbers bad. I mean, this girl's the walking uh, walking double double, you know, nineteen That's my and point. thirteen, if I'm not mistaken. So talk, talk all the shit you want, and to me, that kind of energy is the reason why everyone is starting to watch more, giving women the, the time of day, exactly. you know, to, to, with all due respect, to be honest with you, because now you see the Jujus and you see young girl over at South Carolina and what they've been able to do after losing five players to the WNBA, yep. the big girl over at Stanford, yep. uh, you know, the games we have coming up, you know, Paige Becker I, I, off an of injury, you know, him, her and Juju are going at it tonight. So I don't understand why you have to make someone a villain for enjoying the game, talking shit on the, in the game, but also backing it up with numbers. Yeah, you know, I, I, this 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 is not a, uh, a, 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 a this all due respect, not a diss to Draymond, but he does his job well, and his job is not to score. But Draymond can do all the talking and all that, and have zero points, ten assists, ten rebounds. Why Reese can't do it when she's putting up those same numbers and putting up points? So I, 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 I hate I hate how how we look at it, and like you said, double standard. yeah, double standard. But but the proof is in the pudding, Matt. That's why we're watching because they they have been passionate about the game and the talent is high. Mm, absolutely. Uh, the men's side, Will Burns and Edney. Will these two big fellas, uh, the, the big fellow over Edie. at uh, NC State, I, Edie, yeah. Edie, excuse me. I haven't got a chance to see. Bur I, I saw highlights of 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 Burns the other day and what he was able to do to Duke. I missed that game, but I've seen Edie play a couple times. Stack, do you think both these big fellas translate into a, a more guard-oriented NBA? Yeah, I think both of these guys are pros. Uh, Edie, Edie is a big man that I think if they fuck around and get him to San Antonio, we in trouble. Mm. We in trouble. And I, mm. and I know Pop is uh, Pop is licking his chops, 
hoping trying to get him back down there, which he might not be available, but you know, Pop know how to make things happen to get that old Timmy Day feel again. That'll be a good look. Mm. Um, I, I I like Burns. I can't lie, I like Burns. He 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 he's a uh, he's close to being a Zach Randolph. He just has to get in better shape. But his his his, his touch around the rim and then his moves around the rim is Zebo to a T. He is a big bully that can't be stopped. But he needs to mm. if he if he gets in better shape, Matt. He'll be a top. He'll be a top uh, draft pick as well. Mm. I love to hear that. Again, we haven't been able to, you know, been paying too much attention to the men's side, but there's obviously some talent over there. But it's just, you know, the the, the women are kind of on front stage right now. Uh, man, we just dropped a special episode of our brother Rajon Rondo. Uh, dropped yeah. yesterday. Uh, we, you know, welcome him to the family Double again. I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting a chance to working with, you know, his mind and and and, and the way he sees things and you know, build a couple shows over here or uh, for him over here at this, the, the ATSP family. Mm-hmm. Um, we drop uh, Antoine Walker this Thursday, Antoine. Kentucky Celtics in the house. That was a great sit down. Um, Jack shit. By the next time we're on the air, you're going to be a year older. So uh, you heading out to LA soon, right? Yeah. I'll be there Thursday night, man. Peaky blinders theme party. Hey, it's going to be a movie. Mm-hmm. You called me burnt last night. I can't wait to see what you Ooh, call me late. Saturday. Well, I just want to show you what's out, what's out, what's what's out here waiting on you, brother. Look at that! Yeah, the cribs got killer views and square feet. Woo! What is that? Right? Waiting on what you, baby. They got a uh, so, uh, trampoline or something. That's the what's more. It's another pool. That's the pool. It's just it's, it's infinity. Okay, that's what, okay. That's what we here. doing. Okay, Eight, okay. Yeah, but we waiting on you, baby. Happy early birthday! You, Send brother. me what you're wearing, so, I, so so I know what kind of game I have to to, to come with this Saturday. Yes, sir. And uh, man, safe travels, bro. Love, Love you. Love you too. You can catch us on the DraftKings Network and the All the Smokes Productions YouTube, man. We'll see y'all next week. Peace.